My name is Rapsody, welcome back to Protect the Pile. We are going to be playing two different random clans here. The primary and allied are both going to be randomized, which will give us the ability to possibly pick up some combos that we haven't necessarily thought of before. Here we have the Remnant as well as Hellhorned. Interesting. So we have the ability to reform units and also the ability to kill a random friendly unit for an effect with the Crushing Demise. Hmm. That seems like a really good way to be able to reform constantly. So we're going to need a unit that we want to reform. Now, in the last episode, I learned that I'm not good at doing that. Uh, so I read a lot of the comments that people had about how to handle reform. And one of the biggest things that I've taken away from it is that reform isn't really meant for, or like a consistent reform buff, isn't really meant for a low attack, high health unit. It's meant for a very high attack, low health unit, like a draft. Um, so we'll be looking for something like that. Summon abilities trigger an additional time. We are playing with Hellhorn. So Hellhorn does have access to imps. Hmm. The imps have all changed as well. The spell power doesn't really mean that much. It's like a little bit on the, uh, the torches. I'll take this. This has the potential to be much more powerful than the other. Okay. So maybe I will take the reform... Let's make the same mistake two times in a row, eh? Use that to reform imps consistently? Seems like maybe a good idea. Getting a bunch of imps back constantly? Maybe? Seems good. Maybe? Good. Imps? Possibly, though? Uh, one problem. Backliner is too... Actually, no, I'm, I'm probably fine to take this. Because I can torch the backliners, and then I can try and use the other thing to instantly kill one. Go burnout, wreck to flicker behind. Maybe even a train suit there? Okay. And then I get the drag back. Great. Gonna put a train suit on the top floor, drag here. This one's not going to die this round. So in fact, I'm going to put you there and then I'm going to kill you and the enemy. Nice. So did I actually get the reform off again? And then I have like zero units to reform right now. We'll battle you and then probably just like, drag, drag. Uh, I should have inverted those actually because combat goes from the top down. So the drag should have been in this one, should have been in the front because then I would have reformed it. Yeah, that's my bad. Would have reformed it already this round. Okay. All right, that'll get him. The extra damage pump from the rage there is really good. It's also very, very important that I pick up the extra money here. So that's like I, why I wanted to... Oh no, the allied unit. Right, it took the challenge for a different reason. Enhance a friendly unit with plus five damage and apply burnout too. I mean, I do want my units pretty consistently to die. So I don't really care. It's enhancing them with, yeah, it's enhancing them with five and applying burnout too. So that doesn't stay on the card. So the burnout won't stay after the unit gets reformed, but it will extend its lifespan. Molting Imp, it now deals five damage to all enemy units on play. In fact, it deals 10 damage to all enemy units on play with the Ashes of the Fallen. Ooh, Horned Warrior got more powerful. Nice. Lady of the Reformed is a good frontliner that has the ability to make burnout units very, very powerful behind her. Like, as in, uh, live forever. Hmm. 
Maybe that's like a second floor. No, but if... The thing is, if I have like a tank in the front line, then I'm not killing things often because they'll come back with a higher burnout than they initially had when they get enhanced with burnout ones. So they'll come back with three. So I'm not going to have people die many times in battle if I do that. Horned Warrior is just like a decent unit. Like it's, it's very much damage. It's, it is DMG points. Honestly, reforming the Molting Imp every turn looks like really good to me. What if I just reformed Horned Warrior? I'll take it at the absolute least for damage. So one of the uh, one of the things I really wanted to do early was get money so that I could go to the Merchant of Magic so that I can start decreasing the cost or getting double stack on the Ritual of Battle. This side has a remnant unit and unit upgrades though. Unit upgrades are pretty important for the Horned Warrior. It'd be really good if the Horned Warrior had quick because then it would be able to kill a unit before it ended up dying to, to the units that responded, or at least deal a bunch of damage before it ended up dying. Uh, Multi-Strike's obviously really good with it. Endless is not good. Uh, giving a Burnout, actually, but like yeah, that would be really good. I'm going to go for it. Mmm, Paraffin Thug. Paraffin Thug fits exactly the same role as Horned Warrior right now, but it's just a bit weaker. I don't need to overlap that. Upgrade a unit with Burnout 1 and plus 5, plus 5. So effectively, that's like it already has a reform. But it does mean the first time I play the Horned Warrior, it'll die that round, which gives me the ability to then get it back with a Rector Flicker really quickly. Ooh. No, Molting Imp already dies easily. It's fine. I'm going to give you that. I'm also going to give you Large Stone. One of the big problems I had last time we did this is uh, I didn't have damage. And this is uh, at least some damage. I can I can verify that there is damage in this deck now. You'll have to take my word for it. I promise I put some damage in there somewhere. Train Steward might end up getting row formed here instead. Hopefully not, but maybe. Train Steward did get reformed instead. Rude. Alright. Uh, let's go Train Steward there. Drag behind for that kill. Train Steward there. Another train steward here with another dreg behind. Uh, in hearts? I need to get rid of these train stewards as quickly as I possibly can because, you know, I don't want to... I mean, I'll, I'll give you that. Need to get rid of them as soon as possible because I don't want to be bringing them back. I killed the drag. That's not what I wanted to kill, honestly. This has burnout one. Uh, but that's going to die right now. Hang on. I'm going to mold it to get back the horned warrior again. It'll die in the first round of combat is the thing. Oh, and it's a three size as well. Yeah, I can't even play that right now without it dying. For no benefit. Okay, well, at least we got the Molten Imp. Get him. The train suit behind that for a decent chunk of damage. Going on to the next floor.
Yep. Ooh. Okay, okay, okay. Please hit one of the... Uh... No, wait, it doesn't matter if it hits a train steward. I still don't have... Oh, wait, hang on. Kill a non-boss enemy? Yeah, it wouldn't have even helped at all. Oh, here's what does. Burn out. Kill it. Molded to get it back. Specifically, put you down, enhance you, give you more burnout on the timer. That's enough. I'm not trying to just butt my head constantly against the same strategy, by the way. What I'm trying to do here is find what I had misevaluated and evaluate it better. Alright. I'm, uh... Usually, like, it'd be better if I was doing this a couple episodes apart. I just happened to luck into a build that would already kind of naturally be okay with doing something like this. Honestly, Dripfall seems like a decent idea here. To send a unit behind Rectiflicker. Especially, like, large stone units seems like a good idea. No, but if I put them behind the Rector Flicker, then Rector Flicker moves forward whenever the front enemy dies, and then Rector Flicker starts dying. But I can actually bring back Rector Flicker with Molded anyway. Do I need Rector Flicker to live constantly? Honestly, I just need... No, 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 it's fine, it's fine. Uh, I'll take another Molten in because honestly, like, reforming those is interesting to me. I need any. Reforming imps is definitely kind of interesting thing here. Let me go for the artifact. All right, there's no card in the deck that I love enough. Yeah, especially because I haven't got anything upgraded. Not really appealing to me. I'm gonna use on the second unit in a turn. Gain three energy, but there's also. I mean, we have two rituals of battle in this deck. If any deck can take, randomize the cost between 0 and 3 and draw 3 extra cards every turn, it'd be this deck right now. Fine. Fine. Let's try and lean into that. Obviously, Hellhorned also has access to a lot of high-cost units. I've never seen this before. You see the tent before you see the winged hiding near it. You prepare for a fight. Mercy, please. I, I mean no harm. I was left here by my so-called people. <laughs> Traitors. All of them. They didn't even leave me with anything to defend myself. The Gaul! Turns out this fight isn't as clear as we once thought, eh? Perhaps you Hellborn can prove more generous than our friends above? I promise I can give it back to you later in perfect condition. Do you leave the winged some age? Uh, some aid, rather. Sorry. Uh, purge a unit or purge a spell and we gain upgraded versions. What's an upgraded version? I wonder. Because maybe I want to purge something great here, or maybe I want to purge something awful here. I'm going to put a Ritual of Battle in it. Thank you, Hellhorn. Hellborn. I, I won't forget this kindness. Truly, and unlike my feathered compatriots, I will keep my word. We'll see, buddy. We'll see. I gave you one of my highest value cards there. I really hope it pays off. If it decreases the cost, I'm going to be mad, though. Don't you dare. <laughs> multi in the bottom floor. Sadly, I can't blame Molded after I torch my own unit here. That's fine. I'll get the imp back. I, I'm not going to flood the Molded pool with the, uh, the dregs here. 
That's probably a bad idea for us. Burn out because it goes to the bottom line already. That'll get killed. We do have the Horned Warrior in there. Which are all molded to reform you. Um. Not sure that's right. Molded. Return a defeated friendly unit to your hand. Enhance with burnout. Plus five, plus five, and zero ember. The card says whenever you draw a card, its cost is randomized between zero and three, draws plus three each turn. I did not draw this Horned Warrior. It should not have had a randomized cost. The fact that it will, ra like, this is overriding the cost lowering of reform uh, is going to be a problem for this run, uh, to put that as lightly as I possibly could. That's gonna suck. So you go for the double baboom. Hmm. And there is another multi game in there, okay, so I don't have to worry about using like crushing demise or anything this turn. Kind of want to get rid of the Overcharged Apprentice, but I don't want to use one of my minions to do it because I don't want my minions to you know, reform the train stewards in particular. Actually, what if I descend you? Then I give Ritual of Battle to the Frontliner and I Wicklash my own minion. So now, this hand, I have a Molten Imp and I can reform another Molten... Well, let's see if it is going to screw me on the cost, though. Eh, not super screwed. I just do that again next round. Uh, that's not going to die fast enough. Right, it has burnout one, but it's not going to die fast enough for the Rector Flicker to get it back. Okay, uh, it will die though. Uh, so now, I'm drawing seven cards next turn. I'm just, I want to draw a Molded. That's basically it. I've got two in the deck. Shouldn't be too hard to get one. Yeah, Rector Flicker being that high. Not a huge fan. I got a molded, but the molded is kind of expensive. Still got to do it. Okay, what? Nice. That's exactly what I was building that towards the entire time. Very glad it worked out. Starting to feel like maybe I maybe I should have uh, killed this imp with the crushing demise. I'm not reforming anything this turn if I don't anyway. Nice. That's exactly what I wanted to have happen. I just didn't want to take the risk. 
So this is okay at the moment. I have to think about, yeah, exactly. How does this kill bosses? <laughs> um, like the units get pretty big. Don't get me wrong. Oh, fine, but um, still, how does it kill bosses though? You die this round anyway? Actually, hang on. If I descend the Rector Flicker, it could actually get the Horned Warrior back. 50 50 at that point. Okay, so either getting the imp or dang got the imp. It's okay, I still have reforms in the deck. Well, if this would reliably make things zero cost, we'd be fine. Oh <gasps> uh, god. Still the best thing I can do this turn. Don't you dare. What? Maybe it's... Maybe it's working now. Maybe it just wasn't working. And it's, I don't know what's happening here. It's, it's happening now, though. So I'll have to just be cool with that. And then I have the multi-game game next turn. Which is fine. Well, I mean, two again. Never mind. It's doing it to me again. You know? So obviously, I'm comparing this to the mechanic of the Snake Eye in in SDS, uh, which obviously, like, draw is the important keyword for it right there. But I'm also pretty certain that things that change on draw in this game broadly aren't affected. Like, I'm pretty sure I've previously had card generation in my hand and it wasn't affected by the volatile gauge. Like, for instance, an example would be uh, playing Imp in a Box, right? Play Imp in a Box, are the imps suddenly super high cost? I was almost certain that the mechanic worked that they weren't. Now, if I was correct in that, then there should be no difference between that and reform. Because draw as a keyword is not used in either of those uh, circumstances. One horn's tome. Obviously with a uh, with a volatile gauge, it's really, really good. No need for any of those though. I'm gonna go for the extra energy just so that I can like I need to be able to play the the cards that I reform. If reform costs two, uh, that you know this this opens up possibilities like reform costs two. The thing I reform costs two as well, so four energy turn or reform costs one three obviously three one obviously the inverse as well. Double stack would be a huge pickup at a merchant. And removal is very important for me for getting train sewers out of the deck. Kind of dead cards for us right now. Holdover. I'm gonna re-roll. Because consume removal or double stack are both huge. Double stack on uh, one horse tome, obviously. 
uh, consume removal also in one horse tone is a huge pickup. Take the HP, reform the champion again. Now that we're reforming two random units, life is a lot better. I don't have to worry so hard about every unit I play because reforming two means it's a lot easier. I still need to worry. At least a little. Enemies enter with spell shield two. That is kind of annoying due to the fact that the Quill Marksmen in the back line have two HP. So they're really good targets for the, the torches. But also, I'm going to have multi imps constantly. So I don't think it's a problem. Also, I don't want to play torches on those floors if I can avoid it. Because there's the incant triggers on the Master of Light giving them 10 extra armor. Oh, Clipped Reflector. I thought it was called the Master of Light. Did I set up dregs on the next floor? Yeah, it's fine. It also still leaves space for other units. Heck, even leaves space for a wand or whatever. Very expensive hand here. Don't like that. Also going to extend your timer. Yeah, for the sake of being able to kill the Clipped Guardian that's coming up next round. Both of those die. The dregs, that is. Both of them get reformed right now. Even the reform from Rector Flicker is doing it. Uh, it's fine. I'll, like, I'll submit feedback about this. because I truly believe this isn't the intended way for these to interact. I just don't want that to kill my run, you know? Okay. What else can we get done here? Honestly, it's probably just drag drag. I'm also sacking this drag because then I have two units sacked for the uh, for the reform to hit both of them. Okay. Great. One horn's tome is obviously like a huge pick up there. Something you've been waiting for very uh very much so. Very long time, rather. Great. All right, there's the imp back. Uh, I don't need to kill him on that floor. That floor kills itself already. Molded. I can't kill any of my own units here, can I? Not so super successfully, at least. It's fine. That'll burn out next round. It's just not necessarily uh, true that the reflector will get it. Nothing to reform. Nothing really to descend. I could descend the Hellhorns Warrior, but it's not necessary. It does nothing. There we go. We got the Horned Warrior back. Hey. And I did get Dripfall. Unfortunately, the Horned Warrior is too expensive to Dripfall down because reasons. No 
hopefully I also draw the Horned Warrior next turn. 12 cards in the deck, I draw 7. I do. So it dies to its own timer. I'm going to reform Rector Flicker. Yep. Pop you on the top floor. You'll die, but you'll also give me two units back. And I'll also reform another drag just in case it's zero cost. It's not, though. Wait a second! Apply to multi strike. That doesn't stay. Okay, that needs to go on the Rector Flicker. I thought that was going to stay. That's why I was kind of amazed that I wasn't already killing there. But of course, it's not enhanced with two multi strike. It was apply to multi strike. It's still a good pickup. Don't get me wrong, but I need to use it differently now. Uh, no. Momentum Mori, like I do have friendly units die. How many friendly units did I even have die that battle, right? So like, it was basically two death every single round. Five, six, seven, seven, eight, 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 two, 16, 16, 16, 10, 160. Okay, yeah, Momentum Mori is good enough. Turn a random consumed spell to your hand. I have one horn stone. Good enough. A familiar tent comes into view. The winged looks eager to see you behind his curtain. Hellborn, I'm surprised to see you back so soon, but I'm a wing of my word. Here you go, good as new. I even took the liberty of making it a little better for you. Consider it a small way to begin apologizing for our long history of disagreements. I could, however, hold on to it for a bit longer. Give it the old winged treatment. Uh, I could get it now, which gives it heaven's aid, restore two health to your pyre, or yeah, hold on to it. I won't disappoint you, Hellborn. Hold on to it, bud. I want to see what you do with it. Removal matters a lot here. Minion upgrades also matter, but the the Horned Warrior is already out. Of minion upgrade slots. Actually, I'm going to go over here. Check the Merchant Magic. Largely, the artifact actually chose that it was coming over here. Holdover. Honestly, Holdover on Momentum Warrior is not an awful idea. Mm, Merchant costs are reduced by 25% when I'm holding 400 gold and I'm, you know, still a fair way away from the end of the game. Sounds good to me. Let's go to the event. Don't want any of this. It's an X cost. Like, if I actually had taken the other one, that is to say, if I had taken the, uh, the get dazed in the pyre room, maybe I would take the bone rattler here. Still probably not, but maybe. That holds over. Free roll. There's another double stack. Double stack is really good on some. Oh. Burnout four. I do need to extend their timers. It's the big thing I'm having difficulty with is extending their timers. Those. One more. If I can reform the scholar, I can get like a lot of multi strike on a character. Non boss enemy units gain multi strike. Uh, the Clipped Guardians are going to be big, but that gives them the ability to kill my uh, reformed units more consistently. And I also think that maybe I might need an artifact to help me save this run, so I'm taking a little bit of a risk for 
the I would rather uh, I, I would rather not limp along in a run that is doomed kind of situation. Not that I necessarily think it's doomed. It's just like you know, in case. Fine. I need Multinims back constantly, so I had to do something a little strange like that. That's annoying. I can't get the uh, the collector back. So Memento Moris are going to be really like the the uh, card du jour for dealing with the Eclipse Guardians. And honestly, like drip falling them back down. Also seems like a decent way to do it. Stop! It's, it's like an extra five energy a turn this costs us because of the... I, I'm going to stop focusing on it. I'm trying not to. Oh. It's just a, you know, a, oh, this could have been so good kind of moment. You know? You know. <sighs> Sacrifice you there. I mean, you are coming back. Why don't it enhance you? Okay. Then this is good horned warrior. One horn storm. Ritual of battle. Extend your burnout timer. Memento Mori. And introducing the Molting Inn. With special musical guest, Dreg. Uh, another Dreg as well. Okay. We're bound to do it. Impish Scholar, give me. Hey! A low cost. Love it. Okay. Molting Imp on that floor for the kill. Then I'm going to Drip Fall you. You'll start attacking this one. That'll get the kill there. Uh, the big thing. So I'm gonna kill you and then I'm gonna reform you. Draw that next turn or play it this turn. Definitely play that this turn. I think I want you out this turn as well. Oh, I thought I was getting back the the same person. Oops. Oh, never mind. I am. Gimme. Give Gimme. Give Gimme. Give so I can drip fall that unit, but Wicklash needs to go on it more. You've got sweep as well. I'm just gonna Wicklash you, extend your timer. Let's take out the backliner. So, crush there as well. Okay, so I don't even get a resolve trigger there. Interesting. Makes sense. Interesting, though. Alright. I mean, we already have the win here. So, I'm just going to play that. Okay, good. Start a battle, summon four random units from your deck onto the middle floor. 
Can't do that. The impish scholars and the imps. Their effect is actually the only reason I won there. Specifically the impish scholar. Apply endless to a friendly unit. Now I can't do that. Because if I kill, if I give them endless, they just go back to the top of the deck. Then I have to do it again. I get, uh, I mean, I could endless like a, like an impish scholar instead. Impish scholar would be a good endless actually. Although also memories of the melted is actually really good. Let's me play out everything in my hand. So applying Endless to an Impish Scholar would just, like, it would not get reformed at any point because it doesn't go to the, the, uh, it doesn't count as a defeated friendly unit. It just goes back to the top of the deck. But every turn, I would have to draw the Impish Scholar again. But it is a very consistent way of getting the Impish Scholar buffs. Oh, uh, but then the Impish Scholar also gives me back Remnant Pact. Starts making more things endless. Or at least, you know, clogging up my hand consistently. I'm going to take the, the Memories of the Melted here. Inferno is really interesting. Question mark energy in order to deal 100 damage to friendly and enemy units on floor. Like, even if that's not my build at the moment, that's just a powerful ass card. The Ramshackle Tent. Now an oddly welcome surprise comes into view. Safely inside, the winged is patiently waiting for you. Well, it wasn't easy. Let me get that out of the way first. But there is some of heaven's finest work, if I'm being honest. And I am. So make sure this gets used in the right place. Seraph can smell an assault from rings away. But I think you might just have a chance. The upgrade was not cost-related. Uh, reserve. So if it's in my hand at the end of turn, I restore five health to my pyre. Honestly, I kind of thought that was going to be more exciting. I'm not like capital D disappointed. You chuck a lowercase in there and maybe. Double stacking gain. Like, I actually don't even like the buff on it. Uh, let's go for the double removal first. Getting back to Wicklash consistently is very important to me. To the point that maybe I just reroll. Yeah, I'm gonna reroll looking for holdover. No. Don't want to permafrost anything here because if I draw it and it has an, a like horrendously high cost. Can't do anything about that. Also, double stack. I can't, unless it's been changed, I couldn't have put double stack on something that already had double stack in order to get this four multi-strike. Just going to clarify that. Also, I've been asked to clarify what double stack affects, in particular to, to use the double stack to show what it affects at the time. But uh, the easiest way is to refer to it like this. If it says a keyword and then a number afterwards, it's affected. If it says anything else, it isn't. So an example of affected is burnout one on a spell would be affected, right? Because it'd be something like this. Apply burnout two, which got affected, got upgraded, right? Uh, rage six, armor 10, spikes two, regen four. All of these would be affected. Days three, all of those would be affected. Deal two damage. No, doesn't say keyword then number. Uh, enhance with plus three, plus three, or enhance a friendly unit with plus five. Doesn't say keyword and then just a number. Just keyword number. Rage six, that kind of thing. Those are the ones that count as stacks, and those are the ones that are uh, that are supported by the double stack. I could honestly remove another card here, but we do have Merchant of Trinkets alongside an Unstable Portal as well as Forgotten Coins in the next area, so I'm gonna save my money. Alabaster Guardians have Multi-Strike, and they're empowered with Rage. Makes sense. First things first, clear the bottom floor.
No, I can let it get uh, pulled back with the the reform. In fact, I still want it to. Okay. Now I don't want it to anymore if I'm starting to put the tomes on it. Uh, I should have used Crossing Demise to kill that one, actually. I killed it myself because I want it to reform. Ooh. I mean, it looks good, though. I'll say that much. Definitely, it looks good. Oh, no Mental Mori always getting that high cost. God, this is a really bad hand. A lot of high cost in this hand. Also looks like I am losing the Hellhorned Warrior here. 20 damage in front of it. Yeah, that's not going to do it. Uh... Yeah, gosh. Oh, no, wait. I kill your backliner. It's fine. Still runs out of time this turn, though. It's okay, though. I get it at the end of the turn. you down. Start getting more Wicklashes off on you. Setting you up to be better later. Yeah, nothing there to get. It's fine. Torch fail and move on. We're gonna need a, uh, probably like an Inferno. Nice. Inferno, quite low cost. Kill the Clip Guardian for me. Also get the Impish Scholar, which is quite low cost. Probably should have put that down before I did the Inferno, actually. So that I would have been able to kill it this round. Well, now I have to personally kill it. Totally fine, though. The heal a unit and give it reform, I'll also put in this deck, despite the fact that that's only cost one. It's really good with what we're currently running. The battle. Back the tome again. Put that tome again. Destroy the thing up there. Save myself some HP by killing the backliner as well. Hold. Need more burnout time up, please. Need it now. Uh, getting way too late. Wicklash, good. Low cost. Can play it. Let's. Impish Scholar. Getting back the book. Fine. Play the big book. The health of this unit really scares me. Or should I say lack thereof? Quick on that, you know, would be so good. Hmm. It's crushing demise and whiplash in the next area. It's just, it's not going to deal much damage, right? Like, I might be better off using Inferno right now.
Don't think there's anything I can do to keep the Hellhorned Warrior alive, right? Nope. Especially not now. The Rector wasn't going to trigger its reform, by the way. Combat never ends because of the Dauntless. Combat in this room continues until all the enemies are defeated, and obviously it wasn't going to win the combat. Let's... Memento Mori for 70 damage. So a Molting Imp for some damage there as well, and... I'll drip for you down, so I have the ability to get you back next turn, but also deal 11 damage. There's another Memento Mori. Unfortunately, Molded costs 3, the other Molded costs 3, and Wicklash costs 2, so I don't have the ability to get back my, uh, my Horned Warrior and play it. I think I need to mold it regardless. Actually, you know what? We'll mold a... Don't you dare cost... Okay, good. Ugh, if the Rector Flicker cost too much there, we were actually going to have a real bad time. Hang on. Are you going to die before you give me any units? Counts down every turn when Burnout runs out of units as triggers the combat. You better give me cards back, otherwise I'm going to be real mad about this, you know? Nope. And it's not because there was no combat on that floor, by the way. Resolve triggers, resolve trigger, regardless of whether or not there is a combat happening on the floor. So it's just burnout one and a resolve trigger don't work together. Although... And you'd kind of assume that they would, considering it happens at the end of combat, and it doesn't die until the end of combat. Anyway. Uh, again, I have a Molded and a Wicklash that costs too much to play on it. Oh, never mind. Thank you. Thank you for that. Simply gotta get this back. It's only gonna be able to attack once. Are any of these better? No, definitely not. It's only going to be able to attack once. Even with the extra burnout, because it just dies in the second hit. Uh, I honestly believe we made a lot of progress in, uh, in discovering how to burn out here. I sincerely believe that we made like a huge amount of progress in discovering how to burn out here. And also, I think that, again, not to belabor the point, but I think that if the, uh, if the volatile gauge worked in the way that the card text, the, uh, the card and artifact or trinket or relic text happens to imply, uh, and consistent with examples that exist in other games of the similar mechanics, that uh, we definitely would have won. Like, I have no reservations about that. 100% we would have won. Like, literally, it just came down to these things still cost me energy when I draw them. Uh, when I get them from this. Preventing me from doing a lot of stuff. Triggers a unit's extinguish ability without killing it. Interesting. So that's good for uh, tomb units. And then there's mold braces. Friendly units gain extinguish apply five armor to the front enemy unit. Uh, friendly unit. That's incredible with Umbra. Imagine all the morsels having that. Ooh, baby. Sounds good to me. Well, we've uh, picked up another level on the Melting Remnant, but unfortunately lost our win streak. For the moment, my name is Rhapsody. The name of the game has been Monster Train. Hopefully you've been enjoying yourselves, and hopefully we will see you next time.